Welcome or welcome back. I'm Melanie Kate Love and thank you so much for joining me here for another episode. Now today I wanted to answer a question that one of you from our Before MK Love fam actually submitted on my latest video and the question was just so profound and it just really made me like oh I haven't spoken about that, so I'm just going to make a video response. So today's question comes from the beautiful Laurie, and she asks, So, as far as relationships and looking at the positives, do you just ignore when you are literally treated badly? Like when someone is nasty to you. I understand the concept of the law of attraction for the most part, although it's fairly new to me, but I'm just wondering about this. Laurie, thank you so much for your question. Also, massive shout out to Courtney, who actually got in before me and responded back to her. And I really loved her response. And she wrote, I think if you want to clean up your vibration around a really negative relationship, you have to focus on the positive aspects. Courtney, I can tell you totally listen to your pancakes. Um, literally sit down and write down things you appreciate about this person and do it often and read it often. But... I would also say that if someone, if this is someone who you can remove yourself from, trust that not everyone is meant to be in your life and walk away. No one should be allowed to be nasty to you. So thank you so much, Courtney, for submitting your response to Laurie. Um, but what I would like to say, there is just so many things. That's why I was like, I have to do a video response. Firstly, when somebody is nasty to you, it is a reflection of them and it is not a reflection of you. It is an internal struggle that they are going through, but you just happen to be in the forefront of the explosion or whatever has happened. <clears throat> Second of all, trust your intuition. Um, to me, when I hear when someone is treated badly, because I have worked um, in child safety, so children in foster care, um, that brings me back to trauma, crisis intervention, working with um, alcoholic parents, working with drug addicts, um, and working with children who have post-traumatic stress disorders and whatever goes along with it. So for me, yes, trust your intuition. Um, yes, you do need to think of the positives, but at the same time, if your intuition is screaming to you that this situation is not right for your highest good and that there are so many flaws within it, get the hell out of there. If in regards to the situation, if it's not like a, a crisis intervention or whatever it is, and someone just like um, was just rude to you, um, which is totally out of character, then I think what you need to do is what actually what has worked best for me on my journey is on the weekend I had a run in with somebody and they were so rude to me and literally sent me a message going fuck off Melanie and I was like dude I do not have anyone in my life talk to me like that and it was so out of character and I was like okay what is going on with this person and I'm trying to work it out and I'm like oh this happened so this may have brought up issues from them and this this and this and I just learned that it's never you that is the problem. And yes, you can write your list of positive aspects and um, have your rampage of appreciation if it's not, you know, considered um, really, really bad. Um, if it's a partner that has said something to you and they've just lost their cool at you, um, you know, just think about all the beautiful things that they do. But I really need you to think about tapping into your intuition as well. If it's a re repeat, constant repeat, and they're always rude to you, or maybe it gets worse to like emotional abuse, physical abuse, that is when it gets serious. So I can't give you an answer for everything. I can't say, if this happens, do this. If this happens, do that. Basically, on a holistic point of view, Listen to your intuition. Your inner knowing is like this guidance system that tells you what is right and what's wrong. So that's the biggest one. Yes, we need to focus on all of the positives around it. And at the end of the day, no one can control the way that you feel except you. Let me just say that again. No one can control the way that you feel except you. Someone could scream at you, but if you are so far in the vortex, you're like, oh my 
God, the poor thing, they must be having a terrible day. There's so much contrast within our reality and you need to be able to use your intuition as well. Anyway, I wrote down some notes, so what else did I say? Know your self-worth. That is massive. Do your self-love practices. It's kind of like your armor for when you face the day. And if someone just goes, like if you're driving in the car and then someone cuts you off, instead of going, oh, you piece of shit, blah, 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 blah. You could be like, oh my God, I wonder if their wife is in the back and she's just about to have birth. Or I wonder that they must be running super late for work. So just changing your perspective about it, depending on the severity of the situation. Um, yeah. I just think it's such an interesting question because at the end of the day, you know, you deserve to be in relationships of high vibrational people. What I have done in my journey is I, I basically have limited the interactions of people that are not, you know, vibrating on the frequency of love. I've kind of, I don't find them interesting. And I don't know, I think maybe that's why Peter and I get along so well is because he's a high flying disc. I'm a high flying disc. My mom is totally there at the moment. She's doing her self love practices. When I went to see her in Mackay, um, she has breakfast and she sits out, has a green smoothie, and she's just blended up in the Nutribullet. And she looks out and looks um, over the garden and sees her beautiful flowers. She was listening to Abraham Hicks when I walked out. I was like, oh my God, I taught you that. I taught you this is what you need to do and you need to raise your vibration so you vibrate in the frequency of love. That's kind of the easiest way to say it. Do your self-love practices, know your self-worth, trust your intuition. Don't take any shit from anyone. If someone's gonna be rude from you, take a step back and be like, whoa, you need time to sort this out. I'm here for you when you're here for you when you are ready. But don't you dare speak to me like that. You have to stand up for yourself too. And I think that's where assertiveness comes into. I just feel like I need to draw a, a card for you. Hold on, I'll just I just finished filming all my Oracle videos. So let me just grab a card. I'm just gonna grab the numerology deck. I love this one. Just to get more clarity, maybe I've missed something and my angels give me an extra. Okay, angels, can we have guidance and clarity for Lori about relationships? What do you do when someone's treated you badly? Oops, can you see that? Just one card. Okay, this one. Thank you very much. Intuition. There we go. That's what I was just saying before. You honestly need to trust your intuition. That makes me feel good because that's what I just said. Um, yeah, let's find some more clarity for that one. Just see what else it says in here. 22, good number. Two twos, other twos. Intuition. Okay, this card encourages you to trust your inner guidance and to embrace the intuitive wisdom that resides within your soul. You already know the answer to this question. You're just asking me for, um, what's the word, like confirmation. By drawing this card, you've been asked, you've been urged to honor your sensitivities at all times and to prioritize your pre, your premonitions and hunches over practicality and logic. It's just like, what is the synchronicities that are coming up for you? Trust that. This isn't a time to be influenced by others' opinions or to betray your inner guidance in order to fit it. Instead, you must trust your intuition for it will never, ever, ever let you down. You are now being encouraged to spend quite time alone. Nature and the outdoors will enhance your connection to source and align your soul with mother nature. Likewise, regular prayer, meditation, listening to beautiful music, mindful breathing and exercises such as yoga and qigong will enhance your intuition and help you develop your clairvoyant, clairaudient and clairsentient abilities. In order to improve your current situation, you've been asked to adjust to and harmonize with the natural rhythms and cycles of life. Cycles that are encouraging you to trust your inner guidance. When you are indecisive and unsure, always go within. My intuition leads me to where I need to be. There you have it, my love. It's basically summed up. You already know what you need to do. 
Anyways, my love, thank you so much. Massive shout out to Lori for that fabulous question. I had to do a video response. It's just too much to type. 11, 11, gotta go, my loves. Please subscribe. It totally helps me support this channel and like this video. Comment below. Let me know what's going on for you these days. Check out this latest video. Make sure you follow me on Instagram because I do readings for you over there and I show you kind of like the behind the scenes vlogs of my daily life and it's fabulous because I don't have to edit it. Anyways, my love, thank you so much for watching. Remember, continue to vibrate in the frequency of love. It's going to help you close the gap of resistance, manifest your heart's true desires, and it's going to put you into vibrational alignment. I love you. Bye.